Hey everyone, Fusion360 Evangelist Taylor Stein here, and in this video I'll be walking through the steps to create a 3D printable lampshade. This design is based around the IKEA second cord set. You can buy it for about $8, and in this image right here you'll see all the dimensions that I took of all the parts. In this picture you can see the final rendering of our design, and it's also symmetric along its long axis or the Z axis. So what we're going to do is sketch its silhouette and then revolve it around to create our first solid. To kick things off, under the Sketch menu, I'll choose Create Sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and choose one of these vertical planes. It doesn't matter which one. Next, what I'm going to do is draw one line, so I'm going to select the Line tool, and I'm going to start it at the origin, and this is an important step. I'm going to click and move my mouse up, and click again to stop drawing the line, and then I can hit Escape. As you can see, I have a line that's vertical, and that's represented by this vertical constraint. Let's go ahead and dimension it. So from the Sketch drop-down menu, I can choose Dimension. I'll click on the line, click again to place my dimension. And as we can see, the light is 110 millimeters tall, so our lampshade needs to be at least that. Let's make it 130, maybe 135. That way we have a little bit of breathing room. Next, we need to draw two lines to the top and bottom of our silhouette. So again, I'll choose the Line tool. I can click once down here move my mouse to the left, and if I double click, I'll stop drawing that line and I'll keep the line tool active. I'll go ahead and do that for the top. From this picture, we can see that the lamp cord has a ring that's 46.8 millimeters in diameter, and because we're sketching half of the profile and revolving it, this should probably be half of that. So we'll go ahead and enter 23.4 and hit enter. For the bottom, I'll go ahead and with the sketch dimension tool still active, I'll select that line and place a dimension. And we see that the limiting factor here is probably going to be the diameter of the light bulb. It's 60 millimeters at its widest. We also need to consider that we need to fit our hand inside this when we screw the light into the lampshade. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of breathing room again. Maybe something about 45 millimeters. That way it's 90 millimeters in diameter at the end of the day once we revolve it. So we have the three main lines for our lampshade. What we need to do now is connect the bottom left with the top left. We could do that with a straight line, but we're 3D printing this, so let's make it interesting. To kick things off, I'll go ahead and choose the Spline tool. I'll start the spline from the bottom left corner by clicking once, and I'm going to add a control point somewhere here in the middle. I'll click to add my control point, and I'll place my third point coincident with this point up here. I'll click the green check to stop drawing a spline, and we can see that we have a nice closed profile. Now what I can do is move my control point around to change the look of this curve, and if I go ahead and click on the line, you'll see that it brings up these green tangent handles. What I can do is I can drag these tangent handles to change the tangency at that given control point and change the curvature of the shape that we have. That looks good to me, so I'll go ahead and hit Stop Sketch, and I'll hit the Home button to get a nice view of everything. Next, to revolve it around from the Create menu, I'll choose Revolve. For the Profile, I'll select the profile we just sketched. And for the axis, I can either pick the vertical axis or this vertical line. As you can see, we create our first solid body with this revolve command. I'm going to keep all these settings just as they are. We want 360 degrees, one side, and a new body. So now we have the main body to work with for this lampshade, but there's a few things we need to do. From this picture, you can see that I only have the pattern running through the majority of the part, but the top and bottom has a little bit of a ring that is unaffected by this pattern. Let's start by going ahead and splitting the body at the top to create that first ring. I don't have any geometry located where I'd like to split the body, so let's go ahead and create some. To do that, from the Construct menu, I'll choose Offset Plane, and now I just need to specify a flat surface to offset from. I'll select this plane, and I can offset down by let's say negative 8 millimeters. You'll see that I now have this construction plane going through my part, but if I open up the Bodies folder, I still only have one body, it hasn't split it yet. To split the body, under Modify, I'll choose Split Body. I'll select the body to split, and for my splitting tool, I'll select the construction plane that I just created. Now, under the Construct drop-down menu, if I hide the plane, you can see that I have body 1 and body 2. Let's go ahead and hide the bottom portion, and I'll go ahead and hit Home. Next, what we need to do is to create a hole in here for the main portion of the cord to fit through the top of the lampshade. From the image here, we can see that it has a diameter of 40 millimeters, so let's keep that in mind when we sketch out our circle. From the Sketch menu, I'll choose Create Sketch, and select this top face. And now I'll choose a center diameter circle. I'll place the center of the circle right here. I'll click, and now I can go ahead and back and choose the Sketch Dimension tool. 
select the circle, and I can set its diameter to 42, that way we have a nice one millimeter gap all the way around. I'll choose Stop Sketch, and we're ready to extrude it all the way through. From the Create menu, I'll go ahead and choose Extrude. I'll select this inner profile, and you'll see that I can drag it down through the part to create that cut. Now this isn't really the cleanest way to do it by just dragging it all the way through. What we really want to do is tell Fusion that we want to extrude to another surface. To do this, we'll change the extent from Distance to 2. And for the surface that we'd like to extrude to, let's go ahead and click this bottom surface. I'll hit OK, and now if we ever change the location of that initial construction plane, that extrusion will update properly as well. Next what I'll do is I'll hide body 2 and show body 1. Now let's go ahead and shell this out to a uniform wall thickness. From the Modify drop-down menu, I'll choose Shell. And now I need to select the faces that I'd like to remove. In this case, it's going to be the top face right here, as well as the bottom face. So I'll rotate around to the bottom side. And an important step is I'll hold the Command key on Mac or Control on a PC, and I'll add this bottom face to the selection set. When I let go, I can now enter in the wall thickness that I'd like. Let's go ahead and enter 1.6 millimeters. I'll hit OK, and you'll see that we have a nice hollow form for our lampshade. Just as I created the ring for the top portion, let's go ahead and create that for the bottom. Again, to do this from the Construct menu, I'll choose Offset Plane. Choose this bottom thin surface I'd like to offset from. And let's offset this by 8 as well. And it's going to be negative just like last time. Again, to actually perform the split, from the Modify drop-down menu, I'll choose Split Body. Select this body as the body to split. And from my splitting tool, I'll click my recently created construction plane. So there we have it. We have body 1, body 2, and body 3 that make up the main portion of this lampshade. Now the final step is to create our nice pattern through the middle section of the lampshade. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the top and bottom. Next, I'll create a new sketch. And we want to sketch on one of these planes that runs through the middle of the part. So I'm going to select this one right here. The next thing I want to do is project in the existing geometry. To do that, under the sketch menu, I'll go ahead and choose project. And for my selection filter, I'll change it to bodies, and I'll click this body right here. As you can see, if I hide body 1, I'm still able to access all of the geometry projected into my current sketch. Next, what I'll do is choose the line tool. And I'll place one end over here, and one end at the bottom right. As you can see, it creates these coincident constraints, which define that the line has to start and finish on these two lines, but we haven't specified an angle yet. Next, I'll draw one more line just to the right of our first line. And I'll go ahead and add in a parallel constraint to make sure that these two lines are parallel. To do that, I'll choose Parallel from the sketch palette on the right-hand side, and I'll select these two lines. As you can see, I can still move these around and specify the distance between them. Let's go ahead and do that. From the Sketch drop-down menu, I'll choose Sketch Dimension. I'll click on these two points. And let's say that this is equal to, how about, 6 millimeters. That looks good to me, so I'll hit Stop Sketch, and I'll turn on our main body here. Next, from the Create menu, I'll choose Extrude, and I'll select the profile that we just sketched, and this time I'm going to drag it all the way through, and change my direction from one side to symmetric, to make sure I extrude through both sides of the solid body that we have. Now we don't want to perform a cut, we actually want to perform an intersect, which is going to leave us the intersection between the extruded body and the existing body. Really what that's going to do is leave us with these two symmetric strips that we can pattern around in a circle. So what I'm going to do now is from the Create menu, choose Pattern and Circular Pattern, change the pattern type to Bodies, and for the object I'll select this body, and for the axis I'll select our Z axis that goes up and down. I can now specify the quantity, how about 22, and I'll hit OK. So we're just about done. The last step is to pattern the mirrored feature all the way around. So from the Create menu, I'll choose Pattern and Circular Pattern. With the pattern type set to Bodies, I'll go ahead and pick that one that is facing the other direction. Axis, I'll choose the same vertical axis. Let's go ahead and type in the same number, 22. So there you see that we have our pattern features all the way around. I can turn on the top and bottom strips. And now we have our finished lampshade. If you want to change any of these features, find the feature you want to change down here in the timeline, right click and choose edit. 
So if I want a different number of strips going around, I can right click and choose Edit Feature. And I can change the value to something that I like. How about 20? And I'll do that for both of these. And this doesn't have to be a circular pattern, it can be any feature. If let's say I want the opening at the bottom to be a little bit larger or smaller, I'll find that first sketch, right click, and choose Edit Sketch. Now I can edit this dimension down here. Let's say I want it to be 47.5. I can enter that and hit Stop Sketch, and everything that I've done will rebuild completely. Now as a final important step for 3D printing, let's export everything as an STL. To do this, I'll right click at the top of my tree. I'll choose Save as STL. I'll make sure the refinement is set to High, and I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now I can save this onto my desktop wherever I want. So that's how you design a 3D printable lampshade in Fusion 360. If you want to download Fusion 360, there's a link in the description below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching.